Around E3 season, there's almost always a fairly similar formula. The presentations, where you get the big new announcements, like Battle Royale for Fallout 76, or human NPCs making a return in the game this fall. But in the days that follow, you typically have a variety of different interviews from different news outlets that give you some of the additional details, or even some of the more important details around those big announcements. With Fallout 76, there were a ton of these interviews to come out over the past few days, and while in past years I did kind of part these out, making videos on each individual interview, this time around I really wanted to do something different. So to just make it as simple and easy for you watching this video, what I did was read through pretty much all of the interviews I could find roughly eight or so in total with major members from Bethesda and kind of combine them into nice lists of information. So in this video, what I'm going to be talking about is some of the future plans Bethesda has for its Nuclear Winter DLC, as they've actually given us quite a bit of insight from some of these various articles and have made some other pretty big announcements about this. There's also a few things that have been data mined that I will touch on. If you guys do enjoy the content, you can leave a like or subscribe. Soon after this video, I'll have a very similar one on the Wastelanders DLC and all the new info we got on that. But without further ado, if you're not familiar, Nuclear Winter is really two things for Fallout 76. Firstly, it is a new Battle Royale mode as we've been seeing it, but it also is the title of the larger DLC wave, bringing several things, not just Battle Royale. One question that was pretty consistently asked among all of these interviews is whether or not they had planned a Battle Royale mode from the start. And we see a pretty common answer to this, that no, not exactly, but kind of. If you guys remember all the way back to 2018, following the announcement of Fallout 76, there were some interviews discussing how they wanted to add various modes to Fallout 76. And at that point, they didn't just rule out a battle royale. They said they don't immediately have plans for it, but hey, it could happen. Lo and behold, a year later, it did happen. And more or less, what they describe is for a while now, they've wanted something that was a more condensed version of the game. A mode that you could jump into and have a contained 20 or so minute experience. They mentioned how they were pretty confident this would be PvP in nature because that's just typically how that works. And in fact, apparently Todd Howard was the one to originally suggest, hey, let's try a prototype battle royale game just for the heck of it. A small team at Bethesda at one point actually designed and developed a battle royale mode. People played it internally and they realized, hey, this is actually a lot of fun. And then they kept updating and adding to it. And we eventually saw the end result this past week. And you can actually see this all throughout the files of Fallout 76. There are references to other things like a free for all mode, a team deathmatch mode. On release, there were load screens actually referencing a team deathmatch mode. I wouldn't be surprised if there were playable demos of a variety of different modes. We just hear about the Battle Royale one as that was the most successful. To build off that, another common question was whether or not Bethesda looked at other Battle Royale games, notably Fortnite or Apex Legends, for inspiration for their own Battle Royale mode. They mentioned how they were all fans of those games, but they didn't really look at them directly, describing Fallout 76's Battle Royale as being specific to this game, but also they really cite that thing I talked about earlier, how the Battle Royale didn't start out as a a battle royale. It started out as a new mode that would give you a fallout experience in 20 or so minutes, rather than an extended duration in adventure mode. So it's not like they immediately just started looking at the competition and were like, alright, how do we add those features into our game, but rather started building it internally and then outward, starting with more condensed but otherwise staple Fallout 76 features and eventually landing on a battle royale. They explain how there was a genuine concern around the cynicism that tends to follow battle royale now, and it was pretty consistently echoed that those at Bethesda were almost surprised by how successful the mode has been in this first week. They expected it to be well received, but maybe not quite as well received as it has been. We do hear about how this was actually a mode worked on by several studios from Bethesda. Austin is the studio that has been tasked with maintaining Fallout 76 and did develop it. They helped on the Battle Royale mode, but even outside of just Bethesda Game Studios Austin, the Dallas studio also seems to have actually put in a pretty considerable effort as far as the development of this new mode goes. Taking that all together, it seems like it gives us a pretty good idea as to how they landed at a battle royale, but then there also was a lot of discussion about where they're taking this next, where will the mode go in the future? And to an extent, after reading all of these interviews, it seems like as far as the future of this mode goes, it's kind of undecided. It seems like a few things are certainly being worked on, and they have some ideas floating around. One of the things mentioned was new maps as a potential, and I would imagine that is something we'll probably see. They already do have the entire Fallout 76 map, I wouldn't be shocked to see them taking advantage of other aspects of it, but that otherwise, as far as future updates to Nuclear Winter or the Battle Royale mode do go, they're going to be looking pretty closely at community feedback. What 
people are complaining about, what people are unhappy with, or really just what people want to see added. It was mentioned how the E3 build that we did see during this free week was kind of the sneak peek build. Originally, seemingly, was only supposed to actually be out for one week, but since people are loving it so much, they did decide to extend this indefinitely. But it was explicitly said that after releasing this sneak peek build, they were going to start making some of the major decisions as to where to go next with it. And to me, that really communicates that they probably have a bunch of ideas floating around, but they're going to look at see what the community requests and start implementing those ideas more actively, which is actually pretty cool. It's definitely a bit of a different approach than they took with the start of this game, how there was a ton of backlash or feedback, and initially Bethesda wasn't super receptive of it, as now they're using community feedback as more of a guiding force as to what to add in. One other thing that was mentioned are recurrent events in the mode. This is something many other battle royales do, kind of a limited time event that just changes up the formula a little bit for a short while. They don't explicitly confirm or deny this, but they do mention if the sentiment of this mode continues to grow and continues in the direction it currently is going, which is very positive, that definitely could be one of the things we do see added. So that's pretty much all of the details they actually shared about the battle royale mode and the future of it. It seems like they are fairly vague with this, but it also seems like one of the big reasons is they're probably not certain as of yet. Over the next couple of weeks, I wouldn't be surprised if we see some updates or fixes to some of the issues that have popped up. And then perhaps over the next couple of months, some more content updates, adding in new features or mechanics. Outside of that though, in a lot of these other interviews, they do talk about the larger theme of Fault 76 DLC overall, and specifically with the Nuclear Winter DLC wave. It seems like this will maybe be a bit of a lighter wave compared to Wild Appalachia as far as story content goes. Some of the stuff that is mentioned is the legendary player system, almost a prestige system, so you could actually have more meaning towards the end game. They don't get too specific as to what that will mean, but any further they do talk about vault raids that are on the way. These will be new instanced raids in Fallout 76, so in essence you and three of your friends go up to a vault, and you guys will have to complete the dungeon in there, which should hopefully be fairly challenging. They also do mention again that they really do want to do more seasonal events. This is something that was widely successful in the past, and they have talked about wanting to do future ones. Through data mining, we've seen things for a Valentine's Day event, as well as several other major holidays. You have to think, with the American theme and lore in Fallout 76, a 4th of July event seems fairly probable. But even further, to go along with some of these future events, they do mention how they want to do a balance pass overall before the Wastelanders deal. DLC. In the past, there's been an issue with events where high and low level players doing it at the same time creates an issue. Whether it be extremely difficult for low levels or really easy for high levels, and it looks like this is something they're actually trying to resolve, so there is ways for both high and low levels to participate in events concurrently, or at least practically participate in events concurrently. But that was largely all they had to say about the larger DLC wave of Nuclear Winter, which makes me feel like we know about most of it, meaning that it'll be the Battle Royale mode, it'll be the Vault Raids, it'll be the Legendary Player System, and maybe some other extra quality of life or server features but I don't think there's some really big hidden quest line that we haven't heard about yet. Naturally, this is all speculation. It's not like we got an explicit confirmation that that's not a thing. Hopefully they do release a roadmap at some point, but you have to imagine they devoted a considerable amount of resources to Battle Royale, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see less in the form of story content as a result. Although we do still have the lore of Vault 51 from that Battle Royale, which is actually quite extensive. But again, to be totally clear, that's not 100% confirmed or denied. I'm just inferring based off what I read from these interviews. Even further, they actually mention how there's kind of a loose outline as far as the year three content for Fallout 76 goes, aka starting in 2020. All throughout these interviews, we do get that line that we're committed to adding private servers and mods. And in one such interview, after talking about year three, immediately after that, they do start talking about mod support and private servers. I wouldn't take that as explicit confirmation that they're not coming until 2020, but it certainly felt like that to me after reading that interview. Even further, there was almost a mention of a staggered release for private servers. I might be misinterpreting this, but it was described as a step-by-step -step process as far as private servers go. I don't know if they mean that internally, or maybe like when private servers come out, at first they'll be a little bit more basic, but then get more and additional features as time goes on, such as mod support. I know that's something I would personally prefer. As of right now, I would love to just be able to set up my own private server and invite specific people to it, even if immediately I can't add mods to it. But again, based off what I'm hearing from these interviews, it certainly feels like private servers 
servers might still be a ways away. One thing they actually do get really specific on is aliens. In one interview, there was a question about whether aliens would be added to Fallout 76 in a substantial way. There's definitely a lot of teases to this and a lot of speculation around that. We get a can't answer that, but then it kind of got expanded to almost be a no, but not directly a no. More or less saying that they did that with Mothership Zeta, and they want to emphasize that they don't really want to do things over and over again as they've done it before. There are certain things we don't want to overdo. Okay. Right, like we had Mothership Zeta for Fallout 3, which, which was is amazing, just, which was great. There's a huge expansion, the last one for that game, and we actually thought at the end we, we might have gone a little too like we don't want the game to turn into a game about aliens. We always like there's certain things in the game that should sort of be like sort of they're, they're sort of like egg, like Easter eggs or hidden content. It shouldn't be, I, we don't want. The design director is very keen on not making aliens the feature of the game, right? So based on the wording there, it certainly feels like to me that they don't have plans, at least right now, for a major alien DLC, and that they'll kind of still remain in the background as a mystery of the game that you always get little tidbits of. But yeah, otherwise, that's a pretty good idea of some of the future plans Bethesda has for their Battle Royale mode, for Nuclear Winter overall, and really how they landed at adding Battle Royale to Fallout 76. Because I know to a lot of people, that doesn't seem like a natural fit, even though in reality, as they've added it in, it actually does, I think, fit in pretty well. But again, in the near future, probably tomorrow, if you're watching this right as it goes up, I should have a video in a pretty similar style, except looking at all of the new tidbits of information we got around the next DLC, that with Wastelanders, and there's actually a lot more talk about that. And trust me, a lot of really interesting things are mentioned that were not mentioned at E3 otherwise. Either way, as always, again, I thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.